Today's esteemed speaker is Dr. Umeshwari Dhakar. Dr. Umeshwari Dhakar has completed her LLB from Nehru Shillong and uh, her LLM from NLU Delhi. And she has done her PhD from Nehru Shillong. She is a visiting faculty in various universities and colleges like UTM Shillong, MIT Shillong, and Shillong Law College. We welcome you, ma'am. And it's over to you. Thank you, Richita. <coughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, to start with, I think it's better that I show some PPT that I've prepared. So let's start with a PPT. OK. Best evidence rule. Now, Indian Evidence Act provides the fact of which evidence can be produced before the court. As we all know, in criminal cases, in order to determine the guilt of an accused, the best evidence is to be produced before it. And once this evidence is proved, then come the evidentiary value of the evidence against the accused. And if the evidentiary value is strong enough to prove the guilt, then only the court could convict the person. Now, there are two types of evidence. One is oral documents. The other is documentary evidence, which include electronic records. Now, now what is oral is unable to speak. There's, There's some, some problems, problems behind. Time. According to Section 119 of the Indian Evidence Act, a witness who is unable to speak may give his evidence in any other matter in which he can make it intelligible, as by writing or by sign. But such writing must be written and the sign made in open court. As such, evidence so given shall be deemed to be an oral evidence. Thereby, we can see that oral evidence does not only must be the evidence of that person who hold that opinion on that ground. Now, we have understood about oral evidence. What is documentary evidence? Section 3 again of the Indian Evidence Act says, all documents including electronic records produced for the inspection before the court, such documents are called documentary evidence. Besides that, these documents are of two types, primary or secondary evidence. Now, what is primary evidence? Primary evidence means the document itself produced for inspection before the court. In this section, there is two explanations. It says, where a document is executed in several parts, each part is primary evidence of the document. Where a document is executed in counterpart, each counterpart during executed by one or some of the parties only, such counterpart is primary evidence against the party executing it. Now we need to understand this point. Several part. What do you understand by several part? When, for example, I'm giving you an example, going to a petrol pump, fetching a petrol pump, when you pay, you get a receipt. In that particular machine, when the receipt comes in, in the same portion, in the same Sense two two risks come at the same time. It is executed at the same time. This is primary evidence because it is at the same time coming. Now the other part says that each counterpart, for example, the other is signed by the other party. So this document, which is with you and your friends, are counterpart to each other. Next explanation says, where a number of documents are all made by one uniform process, as in the case of printing, lithography, or photography, each is primary evidence of the content of the rest, but where they are all copied in a common original. For example, you have Xerox. Here I have shown you an example. A is the original copy. B is a Xerox copy. C is again a Xerox copy. Now, B and C is a secondary document for the original A document, whereas B and C are primary documents to each other. Now, what is secondary evidence? Secondary evidence, according to Section 63 of the Indian Evidence, it includes certified copy given under the proof. 
at section 65c in which cases secondary evidence relating to document may be given there are some points where secondary evidence can be given it says point number a when the original is in the possession of power of a person against whom the document is sought to be proved or of any person out of which person says that this document is not in your hand but it is in the other person against whom you have come before the court or this document is out of reach suppose it is out of station or the process out of uh, out of station to the process of the court or this particular document is with a person opposite person and it is he is where he is legally bound to produce it before the court but he is not producing stating after uh, when you did section 66 suppose you have given any particular someone to produce a particular document and that particular person is not ready to submit that particular document stating that he, he did not get the someone in such situation secondary evidence if available you can produce before the court next it says when the existing condition or content of the original have been proved to be admitted in writing by the person against whom it is proved or by his representative in interest in such situation also you can prove the secondary evidence next when the original has been destroyed or lost or when the party offering the evidence of its content cannot for it to be you know examine before the court in such situation also you can always produce a secondary evidence now this have clearly stated on what what ground secondary evidence can be produced before the court coming to the best evidence to be produced section 59 expressly exclude oral evidence it implicit that if evidence is available in the form of document or electronic form then oral evidence shall be excluded and hence only oral evidence shall be allowed to be proved now if we if we refer to section 91 of the indian evidence act it says the first part of section of this particular section says it stated that if there is any transaction in the form of a contract for example seal or partnership etc or any kind of grant such transaction has been documented then this in this situation, the term of contract shall be proved by the document itself. You cannot say that, okay, I want to prove it orally, or oral document need to be admitted out here or need to be proved. any particular evidence by any particular documents now you cannot come before the court again with other document and says that you know you you try to contradict that particular statement or you started adding or any kind of subtraction the court under this particular section exclude the evidence of oral agreement because it has already been proved however there is a proviso for this section it says any fact may be proved which would invalidate any document however if you want to prove any fact which will invalidate the other document which have already been proved in under previous section then this is allowed second 
when their existence of any separate oral agreement as to any matter in which the document is silent and which is not inconsistent with its term. In such situation also, you can always give a document. For example, you have entered into an agreement with B that you are selling a horse. Now, you have already documented everything is done. However, one part of that particular contract is not mentioned that the, the horse is not sound. All right. So out here, you can prove a document only on that aspect which the contract is not mentioned that the horse is not sound. In this situation, if you produce another evidence based on this, then only that is permissible before the code of law. Next, the existence of any separate oral evidence constituting a condition precedent to the attaching of any obligation under such contract grant or deposition property. This also may be proof. Any separate oral agreement, if you have made beside the documents that have already been proved, any other separate oral agreement, to that also you can always prove. Now, it says the existing of any distinct subsequent oral agreement to the recite or modify any such contract grant or deposition of property may also be proved. If there is any other modification made on a particular contract or any kind of grant or any transaction in that situation also, only that particular points which have been modified or such contract or grant, that also may be proved. Or any usage or custom by which incident not expressly mentioned in any contract are usually annexed to the contract or the description may be proof. Here also, there is any kind of usage or custom which is not already mentioned in the contract. As such, this point also can always be proved before the court. Next, it says, any facts may also be proved which shows in what manner the language of a document is related to the existing fact. This particular portion also you can always prove before the Hello. Hello. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much for your wonderful insight on the rule of best evidence. And thank you, uh, you ma'am. Dear subscribers, uh, dear viewers, and the participants, please subscribe to the YouTube channel of Dhyan.